Hey folks, hope everybody's doing good. I'm sitting out on the porch tonight enjoying this warm weather uh, before all the, uh, the rain and storms come and uh, I like to sit out here and, and just enjoy the, the warm weather in the evenings and I decided I'd do another video uh, just to uh, give some more encouragement hopefully uh, looking at where we are right now and, and uh, especially with, with Easter coming up and uh, but just, just thinking about where we are right now uh, with uh, the coronavirus. Uh, right now in the United States, we've got over 435,000 cases, 36,000 uh, of those in the past 24 hours, new cases, 14,793 deaths, and, and 1,885 of those have happened in the past 24 hours. Uh, in Kentucky, we've got 1,346 cases and, and 73 deaths, uh, and those are Man, those are just tough numbers to, to look at as, as we see those continue to grow every day. And You know, if you're like me, you, you turn on the news and you, uh, you hope that every day, you know, you're going to see something getting a little bit better. Uh, but as far as this has gone so far, it just seems uh, every day it's gotten a little worse and the numbers have gotten higher and higher. And, and even though we have been told to expect that, it's, it's still hard to see those things. Um, and so I just want to uh, continue to... Uh, encourage us and, and I think God's Word has a, a good word for us on that particularly in thinking about uh, this Sunday of, of being Easter Sunday and, and churches uh, it's just not safe for churches to gather together uh, in groups of people with, uh, with uh, this pandemic going on and so uh, we find ourselves in a, uh, a very different spot from, from any Easter that certainly that I can remember in my lifetime but uh, I think the I think this word that the Apostle Paul gives us here in 2 Corinthians uh, can be a good encouragement for us as we think about not just about the, the, the crisis that we're in right now, but uh, also in thinking about the, the church gathering or, or not being able to gather uh, and, and, and what that can mean and, and what, what, what can God's word teach us about this. And so, you know, just thinking about gathering together in the church, you know, people gather in church for for a variety of reasons and, and hopefully that we're, we're gathering together to, to worship the one who alone is worthy of our praise but we have other motives too don't we uh, as we gather e even biblical ones the, the Bible instructs us to to gather together to worship together uh, to break bread together encourage one another hold each other accountable but we also come together regularly because because really we crave something uh, when we come together and, and, and that thing is hope uh, we crave to have hope in our lives and we gather together looking for encouragement seeking hope and desiring to be to be motivated to, to greater things in the Lord and uh, in a world that just seems so filled with with hopelessness and discouragement and defeat we we all just want to know how, how we can live life every day uh, and not lose heart uh, and, I, and the Apostle Paul has a great word for us about not losing heart even even in the midst of difficult times and that's that's one of the reasons why we miss being able to gather together as a church right now uh, but the Apostle Paul gives us great encouragement and a great reminder here in 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 through 18 the Apostle Paul says this therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You know, in these verses, Paul tells us that, that he's found the secret, uh, really, of staying encouraged in the Lord. And, and he begins with this really an incredible statement here in verse 16 he says therefore we do not lose heart uh, and you just think about that one statement how easy it is right now in, in the environment that we find ourselves in how easy it would be to lose heart uh, but Paul says we don't lose heart and that's that's an amazing statement he's telling us that regardless of, of what comes his way he, he doesn't give up he doesn't give in he doesn't give out he, he just he says I don't lose heart no matter what I face. Uh, and sometimes that's really easy to lose heart, isn't it? It's, it's 
it's easy to come to a place where you're just ready to, to throw in the towel or, or just lay down your burdens and just quit. Uh, look at where we find ourselves today of, of uh, just seeming like wave after wave of bad news. Uh, it, we've got bad news and we've got worse news and it seems every day that the, nurse, the news is, is worse than the day before. Uh, but you know, just reading uh, from the Bible of, of what the Bible says about the life of Paul, it, 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 it would have to have, have been easy really for Paul to have lost hope. It would be easy for him to lose hope and, uh, and be discouraged. But he says, we do not lose heart. And he makes it as, as just a simple statement of fact, as, as this is just how it is. Now, Paul had, had discovered this spiritual secret that enabled him to be encouraged even in the midst of circumstances that probably would have discouraged anyone else. And, and Paul's life was anything but easy. If you think about everything that he went through on his missionary journeys as he, as he traveled to these different churches to, to encourage churches and, and plant churches, uh, just think about these two passages that speak of, of the problems that Paul was forced to endure in his life. 2 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 8. Paul says this, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. So right here we can see things got pretty bad and, and pretty low for Paul. We were burdened beyond measure, beyond anything that he could uh, even imagine, uh, beyond strength, uh, so that we even despaired of life. We didn't know if we would live or die. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23, the Apostle Paul says this, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble, and I do not burn with indignation? You know, so in these verses we see all these trials and, and burdens that Paul faced, but, but despite all of these things, he's able to say, I never lose heart. You know, can, can, can any of us really, in all honesty, can any of us really echo that statement? Is, is there any one of us who can say that I never get discouraged or, or I never want to give up? I'm, I'm always encouraged. I'm always excited and, and energized about my life and, and my walk with the Lord. You know, I dare say none of us could, could, could honestly say that. We all, sometimes it seems we just stumble from, from one discouragement to another discouragement. Uh, we all want to quit from time to time. We just want to, uh, sometimes we just want to stop and, and give no more because we feel that we've, we've already given everything that we've got to give. Uh, and, and in all honesty, sometimes most of us just want to, we want to flee from the trials and flee from the tribulations and the troubles that, that we find in this world, in this life. And, and while there's, there's times when, when leaving troubles and, and afflictions behind seem like the best option, we really should be more interested in, in reaching the place where we can be, as the Apostle Paul here, where we can say, I do not lose heart, no matter what, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad the news becomes, I will not lose heart and I do not lose heart. You know, after he makes this, this amazing statement here that, that we do not lose heart. Paul looks at, he looks at, at why it's, it's so easy for us to do that, why it's so easy to become discouraged and lose heart. In verse 16, he, he identifies really this, this familiar struggle that we all face. But Paul says, though our outward man perish. And the reason it's so easy for us to lose heart is because of that very thing, because our outward man is perishing. Uh, the outward man refers to, to the part of us that, that, that is flesh. Uh, it's, it's, it's both the, the body and the mind. And, 
uh, the results of, of aging and disease uh, in the body uh, and even in the mind can conspire to, to strip away our joy, to take away our hope and our, and our peace, uh, a peace of heart and peace of mind that we have. Uh, and the reason that we can be so prone to, to, as Paul says, to lose heart is because our outward man is being destroyed. Uh, it is perishing. It's being corrupted and ruined. But Paul says, despite all these things, we do not lose heart. Though our, though our outer man, our, our body, our brain, our lungs, our liver, our heart, our muscles and our bones, all these things are, are wasting away, uh, are being destroyed or, or, or being eaten away and consumed. And uh, Even though these things are being wiped out, uh, that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. This, this destruction of the outer man comes from two sources. Uh, from fallen nature, uh, just from the, the fallen world that we live in, the, the sin nature of this world, uh, and the fallen people, the sinful people that, that live in it. Uh, and both of these are due to sin in this world. And, and we know that uh, God's Word tells us, and, and we understand that, that death is, is the consequence of sin in this world. Uh, that's the promise, that's one of the promises that God gives us. Uh, in Hebrews 9, verse 27, it says this, and as it is appointed for me to die once, but after this the judgment. You know, we're, the reality is that, that we're all going to leave this world someday, sometime. Uh, it, it might be from old age. It might be from a, a tragic accident. It could be uh, an act of violence, a deadly disease. It might even be the coronavirus. Uh, we might leave this world in, in, in any of 10,000 ways, uh, but we will leave it. Uh, the Bible tells us that, that, that the outward man is perishing. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 7 reminds us of this. It says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That is, we, we live all of our days in these, in these fragile, as, as the Bible says, in these jars of clay. Uh, that, and one day this vessel will crack, uh, it will break, and, and, and will fade away. And that's the nature of life. If, if, you've, if you've lived a, lot, a while in this world, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, these bodies that we have, uh, they won't last forever. They're, they're dying and they die a little every day. And that was Paul's experience. And Paul understood that. But, uh, but look back at what he says here in 2 Corinthians, uh, again in chapter 4, but earlier, verses 8 through 10. Paul says this, We are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. You know, that, that's our experience too. It's, it's so easy to, to lose heart when when life and, and, and people turn against you, it's, it's easy to, to come to a place where you just want to quit. But Paul reminds us here that, that you don't have to. You don't have to, to be defeated. And no matter how bad the, the news gets, no matter how uh, high the numbers get, whatever it is, uh, it's easy to, to, to want to quit, but we don't have to be defeated. We don't have to be, you don't have to be one of those people that, that used to walk with God. You don't have to be one of those people that, that used to go to church. You don't have to be one of those people that used to be faithful. Uh, and that's because in these verses, Paul gives us uh, a wonderful secret. Uh, how it is that he's able to do this and not lose heart. Uh, and what we need, what I need, uh, is to come to the place where Paul came to. And I, I want to reach this place where, where even though my outward man is perishing and uh, even though I'm uh, attacked with, from without and, and from within and by a fallen nature and a fallen world, uh, that I can say I don't lose heart uh, no matter what. I, I want to come to the place where I, where I can say I don't lose heart regardless of, of what's going on around me or what's going on in me. Even. Uh, and what Paul says is this, the problems of life that, that seem so heavy right now and, and Let's be honest, where, where, where we're at right now seems pretty heavy. These are heavy times. Uh, the problems of life that seem so heavy right now, the, the trouble that seems as, as if it'll never end, the burdens we think that will just break us under their weight uh, are really just weighty for a moment. Uh, just for a moment. Romans 8, uh, 
verse 18 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What a great promise we have. Nothing we face here is, is worthy uh, to, be, to be compared with the glory that we will experience there. You know, our, our problem sometimes is, is this. We, we hear this. We hear a verse like that. We hear it, but we really don't believe it. What we believe is what we see. What we believe is what we hear in the news and, and, and what we feel. And, and we never think it's easy. Uh, you never hear a, a believer testify about their problems and then call them easy. Nobody says, well, I've got all these problems, but they're just light. Uh, but the reason Paul could say this, and, and, and sometimes maybe we can, is, is just really a matter of perspective. The, the secret for not losing heart uh, is maintaining the, the proper perspective. Uh, and maybe we just need to, to ask the Lord to help us uh, get our eyes off uh, of what we see and help us to, to look beyond to this world to, to the glory of, uh, of his presence uh, to, to the glory that's beyond this place that's that's how Moses made it uh, that's how Abraham made it that's how Stephen made it uh, and, and that's how we'll make it uh, by, by taking our eyes off the temporary uh, the things even that we see right in front of us that we know are temporary and focusing on the things that we know are eternal uh, the promises that we have in God's word Paul Paul tells us that, that everything that we face in life has meaning. And, and we shouldn't certainly make light of anything. Everything has meaning. He says our affliction is working for us. Even these bad things that happen can be working for us. Remember what Paul tells us in Romans 8.28. We know that, that all things work together for good to those who, who love God, uh, to those who are called according to His purpose. Uh, and so here's what we need to remember. when. When disease comes and, and seems to drain away your life, it's not meaningless. Uh, when your heart breaks and your dreams shatter, it's not meaningless. When, you're, uh, when your loved one dies unexpectedly or, or tragically, it's not meaningless. When you struggle with, with problems, it's not meaningless. Uh, when, when the tragedies of, uh, of this life just sometimes seem like they pile up on one another, uh, and, and you just seem broken and, and weary and battered. Uh, Paul says it's not meaningless. Uh, the Bible says that, that even these things are working for you. Uh, and the day will come and we'll have uh, not just the perspective that we have now, but we'll have this eternal perspective when we'll see exactly what God was doing uh, during these difficult times. And, and we'll see things that we couldn't see now. Uh, but with that eternal perspective, we'll see what God was doing uh, and so I just want to encourage you, just just live in the truth uh, of who you are in Jesus Christ. Uh, we're just passing through this world on our way home, uh, and along the way we, we may be disillusioned from time to time. We may feel defeated and, and discouraged, uh, but just be reminded that we don't have to lose heart. Uh, even in difficult times, God can and, and will make uh, the journey home, uh, and He'll help us make that journey home with, with joy uh, if we just keep our eyes on Him and not on what we see. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you this evening that, you know, particularly with Easter coming up, that, that we just focus on Christ and focus on the cross and, and the good news that we have uh, through His crucifixion and His death and His burial and His resurrection, uh, that, that we have a, a hope uh, that no matter what happens in this world, we have a hope that, that will not be defeated, that will not be crushed, uh, that will last uh, for eternity. And so uh, I just want to give you those words of encouragement and, and wish you happy Easter. And uh, hang in there.